these extremist so-called leaders would dare to tell us what is in our own best interest. Well, I say, I trust the women of America. I trust the people of America to make decisions about themselves. I trust them. And so don't get in our way, because if you do, we're going to stand up, and we're going to organize, and we're going to speak up, and we're going to say, we're not having that. We're not playing that. Vice President Harris speaking about abortion rights tonight, just after President Biden announced his reelection bid. It comes as North Dakota's governor signed one of the strictest abortion bans in the country. The law will ban abortion after six weeks of pregnancy, even in cases of rape or incest. With us for more, Monica Simpson. Get to know this name, get to know this face. A Time 100 honoree for her work at the Sister Strong Women of Color Reproductive Justice Collective. Thank you for being here. You, every day, and your organization are on the ground working with women who are directly affected by these bans. Absolutely. Help our audience understand what they are going through. Who are these women? These women are like me and like you. Right, They are working folks, they are mothers, they are folks who are just trying to live their lives, make their best decisions, and really think about how they want to build and create their own futures. These are people looking for health care. These are folks going about their days, taking care of their families, their friends. These are everyday folks. And what's happening right now is that we are seeing across this country, in particular in southern states, that they are moving these abortion bans. They are pushing a very, very horrible agenda against our bodies and on our ability to make our own decisions about our families and our futures. And it is horrible what's happening. We're seeing what's happening in all of these different states, and that is what we're fighting against every day, is to ensure that people are not having to deal with that, but actually able to live and thrive in their lives. I know you've spoken to the vice president about the abortion pill lawsuit. What did you tell her and what could this look like if it really ends up being banned? You know, Vice President Harris has been really, really taking a front row kind of position in this in this fight right now. She's invited us to the, to the White House on numerous occasions, asking us specifically what is what's going on, what do communities need, how do we need to be framing this issue. And what we were able to tell her, so many of us doing this work, is that if we see a case like this go forward where we see an FDA-approved drug being taken off of the market, it is going to disproportionately impact communities that have historically been pushed to the market margins the most. We're talking about black and brown folks. We're talking about people with low incomes. We're talking about queer and trans folks. We're talking about those folks who are already working so hard and having to do so much to get what they deserve in this country. And so to take something away at this time absolutely doesn't help anyone at this moment. You and your organization are trying to fight the six-week abortion ban in Georgia. How's that going? It is an ongoing fight. It's a fight that we are extremely committed to. Um, what we do know is that Georgians and what the American people have said in various polls, we, we can look at all of the data that says that no one is interested in living in a country where abortion access is not available to them. And so we know that that's also true in Georgia. And so we are pushing in this fight every single day, framing this fight for what it really is, right? This is not just about the science that people are trying to put to the forefront or trying to make this about a drug. This is really about a very deeply rooted issue in our country right now. We are seeing that racial, that this country is under and undergoing a racial reckoning, right? And when we think about what's happening even in this abortion fight, it is rooted in white supremacy. It is about certain individuals trying to stay in power and to hold that power and to keep it out of reach for those who were trying to assess that power and to take that power. Here's what I don't get. Yeah. In, in these states that are putting these very restrictive abortion bans in place, mm -hmm. Why is it that their pass Republicans are passing the policies that they want to pass, yet they're struggling or hiding when it comes to talk about it, right? If you're passing these laws, mm -hmm. shouldn't you be running a victory lap? I don't get it. 
It's interesting to me, but you know, it's not uncommon, right? They are very committed and they have been showing us for a very long time that they have an agenda that they're trying to push, right? And it is all about trying to retain power. They don't want to have these conversations because they can't. They know that they can't. They know that they're not equipped to have these conversations. They're not willing to have these conversations. And so therefore, they're just going to use the power that they have to move the different agendas that they want, but they're not going to ever really talk about it in the ways that we need to, which is why this fight is so important. Do you believe these battles on state levels are going to energize people to get out and vote in 2024? I absolutely believe that they are, right? I know that what is real for so many people in this country, whether it is voting rights, whether it is reproductive justice issues, whether it's economic justice issues, what the American people want are to be able to make their own decisions about their bodies, about their families, and to be able to determine their futures. And this is an issue that brings us all together across these issues, because at the core of all of it is bodily autonomy. Economy. And so absolutely folks are going to be moving to that ballot to those ballots and to their into their polling stations to make sure that they're going to vote for people who are in alignment with those values to ensure that we're not taking this country back to a place where there are certain people being able to live into their American dream. And those of us that they've been trying to push away are not. That's not what people want. And this is an issue that's going to move people, I truly believe, to put that forward when they think about where they're going to vote and place their vote. Monica Simpson, Time 100 honoree. I'm so honored that you're here with us tonight. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad we're in the red chairs because I really hope they can see your shoes tonight. <laughs> you better show those to the audience because they are They're very fun shoes. Level. <laughs>